this guy's been amazing. Um, and when he rolled in today with this jumpsuit, I knew you was about it, bro. You was about it, all right? You're going to talk, and, I, and he told me, where are my JavaScript people? That's right. He said, meet him outside because it ain't about JavaScript no more. It's about TypeScript is what it's about, <laughs> right? And he's going to take all of y'all and going to put you in the face, yeah, in the face <laughs> right? All that up because his, his TypeScript is your JavaScript, right, is not even, a, it's not, it's, you know what it is? It's below him. That means it's subscript. Oh, 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 man, no, no. That means TypeScript is what? Superscript. What? What? That's two math jokes. Ladies and gentlemen, bang your hands together for Waller Gobo. For the wonderful introduction, Kenneth. Uh, I'm going to be most of my talk over there, so if you want to take pictures of me to put on Twitter, this is your time <laughs> with the slides. I'm educating. Um, so I always try to keep talks very accessible. So um, I'm going to be doing a lot of coding, like all this is going to be done in VS Code. If you want or your phone, should you want to do that. Here. It'll also be in the Discord. Um, so this is the penultimate. I wanted to give a big hand for what Kayla and Richard accomplished this year. All the volunteers. Now, for staying to the next to the last person, you got to stay for Michael. He's going to be the best one. But um, with that, we're going to get into it. So as you can imagine, we're going to be talking about TypeScript. Uh, let's go. So who am I? Why, why are you listening to me? Uh, my name is Waller Goebel. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, I am a boot camp grad. I just want to put that out there for everyone else who may be in a boot camp. You can do it. It's hard, but you can do it. Um, this is my fourth conference talk, but this is actually... This is my second time doing the first one I ever did, so that's why I crossed out first. Uh, I am on Twitter at Waller Goebel if you want to complain about this afterwards. Uh, that's the place to go. And currently, uh, I'm at Microsoft, so that's where you can go from bootcamp if you, uh, if you want to. So why this talk? Um, when I worked at Home Depot, I worked in Angular, and I went from Angular 1 to Angular 2 at the time. Now it's Angular like 70, I think. Um, but I hated TypeScript. I found it so hard. I, I thought I was just running into problems left and right. I could never really get a hang of things. And it was because I didn't take the time to learn it. And I didn't know what all it offered me other than like, oh, now I'm passing in a string. I guess it's a string now. I didn't understand why I would need that. So I did a deep dive myself. And I really started to understand. I realized you could do some really cool stuff. And I want to show you all some of that today. So um, I'm not trying to sell you TypeScript, though. If, you don't, if you're one of those, like, I'm still on JavaScript people, that's you, that's fine. I just want you, and I also don't want to teach you, like, oh, this is a string, this is a number, this is how you define an object. It's going to be a bit higher level than that. Um, what this is, is going to teach us the tools we need to read, which I think is more important, honestly, and write complex types. Um, and because of that, we're going to go over all of this, if we have enough time. Speaking of which. I have to put a timer because I will talk over. So that's done. We're going to close that. We're going to go to the first thing. Um, well, actually, let me ask beforehand, who would say they're pretty like, proficient at TypeScript? Who thinks that like, they're probably going to know most of the things here? OK, well, we'll see. Those who raise their hand, let me know if you learned something by the end of this. So the first thing we're going to learn is about unions, type union. Um, Type string unions and regular unions allow us to say a type can be of a variant state. So if we wanted to make a type named primitive, we'd say it's null, undefined string, number, boolean, begins. As you can see, it's not object, it's not array. It is just a primitive. So with this primitive type, we can say 
hello is equal to world, and that works. We can say hello is equal to big old number, and that works. It will not work for an object because that's not within our union. So we're defining the space within which this type can exist. This gets more interesting, so one of the, this is, enables us to make more complex types when we use the key of, which yields us string unions. So if we say, have our user type, which has a first name, a last name, an email, an ID, we can say the properties of this type are key of user. So that's here, and we can use this to iterate over that later, kind of. So like, if we say, is stuff a user property? It's gonna say, no, it's not assignable to key of user. This will maybe make a little more sense later, but a more base level example of this is, let's say you have a buffer, and you, like, you're, you're creating a class that only takes a certain number of strings as like specialized arguments. You can put those as types within it and uh, make the constructor only take that. So let's say our buffer is a new buffer, hello magnolia ts conf, and it's an ASCII, that'll work. But if we make another buffer, and we say the uh, body is, please don't ask me about buffers. And the type of the buffer, or the encoding is, I just don't want to know about types. It's going to yell at us. Uh, the first time I gave this talk, someone raised their hand and asked me about buffers after that. It was really a top 10 moment. Um, we don't only have string and type unions. We also have number literals, uh, number, un number literal unions. So we can see dice roll is one through six here. And then if we try and set my dice roll equal to 20, it's just not gonna work. This is only a D6, sorry. Dungeons, Dragons, Nerds. Um, any questions about these types of unions? No? Okay. Well, interesting way we can like kind of get towards our use of unions is looking at lookups. So if you've ever had a situation where you are importing for something from a library, and let's say you only wanna use one part of it, you can use a lookup to specify that part and make an alias for that. So if I, want, if I know that user is ID, and that ID is always number, I could just put number there, but I want it to make it dynamic, because like what if, so ID type here is number, but with this lookup, I can say, oh, ID changed to a string, we started using a UID, and type of ID changed to string. So we can make complex relationships between our types with this. This can also work with the unions we just talked about. So the user sub ID or email, so this is our literal union, and we can say, what's a subset of a user? Well, it's just string, because both ID and email are string, but if I change this back to number, then we're gonna see that's gonna say string or number. Uh, yeah, so any questions on lookups? No, yeah, I wouldn't either. Um, the first half of this talk is really building up some tools, and the second half is using those to build some things that are a little, Crazier, I would say. So the next thing we're going to talk about is intersections. We're going to look at this while I take a sip of water. So intersection can be seen as the uh, another way to combine types into multiples. So let's say a common function you're going to write is to take two objects and put them together. So for merge, it's going to be a generic function. It takes one shape of an object, another shape, and puts them together. And we use this ampersand to conjoin those types. So what does that look like in practice is if we merge name Annie and age 30, obviously that JavaScript is gonna yield us one object that has name Annie, age 30, but we can use TypeScript to make it understand that. And this type now knows that I can say merged object dot name or age, et cetera. Yeah, so we're getting into the first thing that I think is a little hard to understand. Who here would say they have a very firm grasp of generics, really understand what they are? Yeah. Uh, Y'all about to learn something. <laughs> so, um, a generic is essentially the ability to make reusable parameterized types. I always think of generics as the like functions of types. They take in arguments and return something to you. So, the most simple generic I could think of is an identity function. It takes in type T, takes in an arg, uh, well it is generically of type T, takes in an arg of T and returns type T. Well, and then just returns it. So what does that actually mean? It means if it takes in one, the return type of identity is gonna be one. If it takes in a string, the return type's gonna be a string. If it takes in an object, 
it can take in that and return anything else. So the function of this is that it combines, um, do you have a question? Oh, okay. Um, it lets us make higher kinded functions that take in multiple things and allow us to do a little more nuanced coding. Uh, why T? That's just been a convention for a long time. T is like type, U is the letter after T, so that's what they use after T. It's very strange. Um, you probably, if you use TypeScript, you use generics pretty often. So you could think of like when you're just using a record, you're doing a record of strings to objects, that's just a map, right? Or when you use array, array of strings, that's a generic as well. Um, and you can see that these obviously provide you the type safety you know and love for TypeScript, that if you have a string map, you can't just add zero at the end. So yeah, that is generics. Uh, then we are getting towards something I bet someone doesn't know here. So map types. Map types are a way to create a new type. It takes in a type and transforms every property of that type. This obviously only works on uh, non-primitive types, so objects. So we can take in, it's kind of a way of iterating on objects essentially. So if we take in nullable, it takes a type and converts all of its members into the union of whatever that was and null. This is uh, available in TypeScript, but we have to really understand how it works if we want to make our own types. So for nullable, you can just use these like, it, I always think it's very strange, like it's kind of weird that we're just iterating within our type system. But so nullable of t takes a p in key of t, you know that p didn't exist there before, right? We didn't put it, we didn't define it. We're saying p is the result of the in, and key of t is taking the key of the type, so making a literal, a union out of the keys of t, and is setting whatever that was equal to the lookup of t of p or null. So who got that? Who really feels like they understood what that did? Exactly. Um, it's a little hard. And this is kind of like an interesting point of conference talks like this. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is not necessarily make sure that every one of you walks out here of a TypeScript expert, but I want you, the next time you're trying to solve a hard problem, being like, oh, well, I only need some of these to be knowable. I wonder if I can use that thing that Waller talked about. So if you don't understand everything right now, that's fine. We're just getting towards a higher level of understanding in general. So um, this is essentially what this, the output of this thing is. If we have um, a user and we run it through nullable, it's gonna look a lot like this. It's gonna say, well, this was a string, now it's string or null. Now it's an ID, an ID of number or null. And you'll notice that regular user would not let us put null here, but nullable of user, we're fine. And afterwards, the new nullable waller is fine. Uh, an interesting thing, you, like, do you think, well, what else can I do with this? This, when I was doing my research, I didn't really understand or know that you could do. You can make things optional. So if you want to make properties optional, you can add the question mark there and iterate through and change all of your objects. And that'll do the same thing. And now I can leave off parts of my object. And then there's read only, which does the same thing, but makes the types read only. And lastly, there is the idea that there's, yeah. Um, yeah, we're gonna get to that next. But you can also put these together, right? You can chain these together. So if I get a partial of a nullable of a read only of user, what is that gonna be? It's a whole lot of stuff. It's got the question mark, it's got the string, it's got the null, it's got undefined. So these really compose, these primitive tools compose into really higher kind of types. Any questions there? That's okay. Um, the last thing, this is the thing where I learned, I can't, I can't really understand why they did this because it seems so narrow in its use case but they actually put minus and plus into the parser of the type system. So if I wanna make something not read only, you can minus read only P and key of T equals whatever it was. And then it is mutable again. It's just really strange. So that's something else I learned. Any questions on mapped types? Don't worry, it's gonna be useful in a minute. So um, here's something we know. Raise your hand if you know and love any in TypeScript. Yeah, that gets some hands. That's probably, 
a lot of people's first real understanding of TypeScript is like, well, it's a, now, now I'm just back in JavaScript. So as you all know, I don't need to teach you that any is your escape hatch. It's like, I don't care about this. Let it, it can be a number, it can be a string, it can be whatever. But then you're giving up some of your type safety for TypeScript. So if we have get property, which is just you know a standard function to get something, and we have an employee who's Waller, Gobel, he's a keyboard jockey, um, we can get property here with our any function, but then we can lie to TypeScript at this point. We can say, well, Waller's name object is equal to Boolean. That's not true. We can see it's not true. But uh, any lets us do that. So this is one of my hard, concrete pieces of advice I'll give in this, is uh, don't just throw any around. Um, but do use it judiciously. There are some places where any is your only option for a type. Things just get too complex or TypeScript can't handle it. But if it's just you're trying to unblock yourself, which is a perfectly fine thing to do, what I recommend, this is the first line of code I wrote in, write in most code bases. I add a, a dollar fix me. I got this from a really great talk by Airbnb um, when they converted their whole base to TypeScript. But this is just a type alias, right? So now I can use fix me wherever I want, but then I have a type level to do statement where if I want to go back and go like, mm, I did some bad things last week. I need to right my wrongs. I can go look for fix me and then solve those problems as they come. And then that differentiates from the time where I was like, I actually just don't care about this. This is, this is going to be any forever now. Um, so yeah, a good example of this, and like whenever I'm writing React, this is one of the first things I do. Like if I have props, like let's just say I'm doing props, I'm like, oh, this is just going to have a name in it. And, but then I want to use props.children. I'm like, oh, well, I don't know how to do that. I'm going to have to go look at React types. What I would do right here, if I don't, if I don't want to do that and I have just have to get my story done, I have a dollar fix me here. And then it works, and I lose a bit of type safety in the meantime, but I get my work done. And I can go back and work on it later. So yeah. Uh, we're going to get to, now this is Annie's lesser known, maybe unknown uh, sibling, unknown. Unknown is like any, but really, really, really annoying. If any is less work, unknown is much more work. So it's telling the uh, compiler, hey, I don't know anything about this. Make me prove anything to you if I want to use it. So like, let's just say, this is a number. TypeScript knows this is a number, but I've just told, obviously, a number is unknown. If I try and use add, you know, add being a function that adds two numbers together, it's going to be like, no, 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 no. That's unknown. You got you to prove it to me. Uh, so if I prove to the compiler, that obviously a number is a number, let's say like with a type of, if obviously a number, the type of it is a number, now it lets me do it. That's kind of a forced example. A much more real example of this, however, is that recently in TypeScript, they added a configuration to where when you catch something, the error used to be typed as any because you can throw anything in JavaScript. You can throw a number, you can throw a promise. But if, whoops, that's not real. Um, Let's say I have a value error. I just made my own error because I'm doing something. And I have a function that's using a random number. And it's just trying to get something, but it can throw an error. When I'm using that, if I have this thing turned on, errors become unknown because that's what they really are in JavaScript. There's no real way. We don't have checked exceptions like other languages. We don't have those fancy tools. But I can make myself have to, I can make myself have to force myself to be more strict and know that, oh, well, error.message is what I'm looking for. But if I say, well, the error is really an error, it's going to be fine, then TypeScript will let me do that. Unknown is really useful if it's one of those situations where you actually don't know what it's going to be. And last of the three weird sisters of types is the never. Uh, never indicates that an impossibility is going to occur. You can't use it. And it'll just stop TypeScript dead in its tracks. So let's say a function that will never return because I wrote a while always loop. Uh, that's going to fail, and it's never going to do anything. And it, even I think TypeScript just knows this is going to happen. Let's find out. Oh, GitHub Copilot does. No, it's just void. It's not as smart as I hoped. But I can't actually use this function, right? So if I use fail, let a equal fail. Oh, it does work. Hmm. But anyways... There's no real reason to use never types in your code because you're never going to write things that never going to happen. It's kind of a silly little bit. 
So you can't type something as impossible because it's never going to actually work. So then you may ask, why would I use never? If you were lost before, this is the part of the talk where it's going to get a little confusing. Um, who's, who's made their own conditional type before? Uh, conditional types express non-uniform type mappings, which sounds like something someone who's good at math would say. Uh, they follow the pattern of t extends a certain type, if so, x, otherwise, y. This is logic in your type system. And this is where like TypeScript really differentiates itself from a lot of type systems, because this you can do crazy things with. So, but some of them are very useful. So let's say, what is exclude? Exclude takes t and u, and if t extends u, never, otherwise t. What is that? That didn't, that didn't really make any sense to me uh, at one point. So how do we actually use this? Let's say if we get the key of user properties, so we get the user properties, and then we ex uh, add them to exclude, and we say user properties without ID exclude key of user and ID, we actually get all the other ones without ID. So if you think about it, they each key went through this system and came out the other end. So first name. Does it extend you? No. Then we get it. ID. Does it extend ID? Yes. We go to never. And then TypeScript strips out those nevers for us. And that's, let's stop right there and try and understand that a little bit. So what we're doing is we're going through this type system and we're having the type system iterate over our types and do conditional logic for us. And that can be pretty powerful, especially combined with the next thing. We have infer. So, this is where things get crazy. Emojis, you know it's bad. So, infer is pseudo pattern matching within types. It's only use, um, usable within conditional types, and it can only be used within the true condition of a branch. Uh, I like to think of it as infer is like setting a variable inside my type system. So, these, uh, these things I've been showing you already exist in TypeScript, obviously not user, but return type does. This already exists. And what this does, it takes in t. And if t extends any function whatsoever, then, well, if t extends a function that takes in any arguments and returns infer r. So right there we're saying, if this is true, then capture whatever it was gonna return, it definitely is a function that definitely takes in anything, capture that r. And now I have r, I can do anything with it. If so, in this case, give me r. Tell me what R is. Otherwise, never. So let's say we have a predicate function. It's a simple function that takes in T and returns a Boolean. Predicate's return type, which we know is a Boolean, but as always, what we're doing with these things is building higher kinded things. So if I give predicate of return type of predicate of any, then predicate return type is Boolean. Um, but what if I just pass it number? What do we think this is going to return, the return type of testing? Anyone? What? Any? That's a okay guess. So, well, but let's, let's go through, let's, let's apply this, like we're the type system. If t, which is a number, extends any function whatsoever, does it do that? No. So it's going to go to never. We go to testing return type, it's never. What that does is obviously lets us go through the wrong path and not apply things that just don't make sense. Never is our escape hatch for building these types because we have to build a true and false branch and lets us escape out if it's false and just be like, okay, well, this wasn't useful. So um, what about the return type of triple? Does anyone want to get, well, help me with this? A number that, a function that takes in a number and returns that number times three. What is the return type of this going to be? Triple return type? Return type? Number, we got it. See, y'all get it. Y'all get it. Um, then the last one for uh, understanding these infers. In TypeScript, we can take in, let's say we have a first. This T extends any array. And if T extends that, we know it does because we already told it to, infer you, comma, dot, 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 unknown array. If so, you, else, never. So let's say we have a tuple of type A, one, and true, if I first that, what am I gonna get? 
string because the first thing in my thing is a string. It's understandable. It's just a little weird, a little hard to get used to. Um, in the interest of time, I want to, we'll go over one more thing. Yeah, we'll just go through. So, um, the last thing, this is kind of a brief aside, but it's one of the questions that get asked a lot whenever I talk about TypeScript. It's type versus interface. Um, spoiler alert, Brandon and I apparently have different opinions on this. <laughs> so, what's the difference between a type and an interface in TypeScript? Almost nothing. Uh, the pros of the type keyword, it's useful for aliasing types. It can do that. Interface can't. It's less characters. Uh, it makes me feel like I'm writing a cool functional language because I get to like, do types and new type, whatever. Uh, the cons are you can't extend. You can't use the extends keyword. So I can have an animal type, ty animal type has legs and diet, um, but I can't type lion type extends animal type. That just isn't valid TypeScript, right? It just gets mad at me. The pros of the interface keyword, you can use extends. Uh, the cons are too many characters. I already type enough in my life, it hurts. You're, you're, you're nodding, but it's true. And it makes me feel like I'm writing Java, which hurts worse emotionally. So you can do it, and if you need to, say, extend your interface to make a sound, uh, that's, that's fine. Um, my advice is use each whenever you need to, and if whatever your base case is, stay consistent. There was a while ago in the TypeScript community some argument over like compilation speed and interfaces were much faster at one point, but they mostly fixed that. So choose whatever you want, whatever makes you happy, whatever gets you coding, but stay consistent because otherwise it just gets kind of weird. Okay, so you guys are TypeScript wizards now. You've learned a lot of things. There's a lot more to cover, but I want to go through some hard examples and show you that like maybe because, I mean, you, you know, you do this in your jobs. You're like, oh, well, what's the type of this? And you click into the React types, and you just see, like, Brrr, and it's terrifying. <laughs> um, but what I wanted to accomplish here is that you all maybe feel a little less terrified and start to go, like, well, I, I know what that is. I see, I've seen the plus sign before. <laughs> so we're going to go through some open source library examples of types, and we're going to try and go through them together. You all ready? You sure? You are. I don't know about anyone else. Okay, um, what is, like, this is actually pretty easy. This is straight out of a library called Typefest. Um, I leaned on it a lot while doing this. I highly recommend it. It's by Syndrosaurus, like the most prolific JavaScript open source developer either, ever. Um, but what he said is, let's see, let's go through. Let's actually skip that one. Yeah, so what does this do? Take a second. The answer is right there in the comments. So this type creates a type that requires at least one of the given keys. The remaining keys are kept as is. So it takes in an object type and a keys type. Those are the two generic types it takes in. The keys type has to extend key of object type and even is defaulted to that. So for each type in keys type, make a map type, right? We know how to do that. So we said key and keys of type. And then for each of those, we make a required pick of the object type and that singular key. So imagine we're making tons of little objects of each key of this type. And then we're doing a lookup of that to find that within the keys type and we're intersecting that with the exception of the other types in the key. Yeah, huh, it's pretty rough. But that's super useful, right? Have you ever wanted to dynamically make only one thing required? Imagine making a configuration for a library. So this is an example of it being used. Responder says require at least one in the responder of either text or JSON. So for either of those properties, well, let's comment this out. It doesn't work, because I've required at least one text or JSON. It's gonna tell me some terrible error that you can't read because it's TypeScript. But, it's wrong. You, you fixed yourself, you saved yourself from an error. It's wonderful. Um, we're gonna try another one, which Brandon is gonna remember, because it's from his talk, right? Brandon went over in his talk how this uh, magical type 
really helped you get your end-to-end -end type safety in Next.js. Someone had to write that type, and it was pretty easy for them to do. So what does this do? Infer get static props type of type T. Well, it's just a conditional type, right? It says, if T extends get static prop types, infer P, so capture the props that are getting passed to get static props. If so, if it extends this, then just give me P back. You give me the props, because I, I want to infer the props type. If T extends a function that takes in context of a get static props type, then we know that it is either a promise of get static props a result of infer P, or get static prop, uh, props result of infer P. So it's capturing those P's. If you can capture inside of a different conditional, because we're in a subconditional now. And if so, just return P. Otherwise, return never. Pretty complicated, but super useful. And then lastly, um, I wanted to show, we run out of time, so I don't want to go that. Um, I wanted to go for a useful case of any. I told you all that sometimes any's are useful. You should just use them. So in Ramda, which is a functional programming language um, library in JavaScript, in TypeScript, um, there's a function that it can take one or very many functions and put them all together called compose. And this is the type for that function. And someone wrote this out, which I think is sad for them. But you can see, well, if it takes one function, it does this. If it takes two, they're that. If it takes three, it's that. If it takes four, it's that. If it takes five, it's that. If it takes six, it's that. If it takes seven, it means this. If it takes eight, it means this. If it takes nine, it means this. If it takes 10, it means this. And otherwise, write your own function. They only support up to 10. But the point of this is, in Ramda, only two of those functions really matter. Whatever the last one returns and whatever the first one takes in. So this is an example of a useful any. Right? It doesn't really matter what it is in the middle. Um, we're going to close up there and preview. Thank you for listening. Um, the day before, yesterday, that's what they usually call it, uh, someone I really like on Twitter wrote this tweet. Uh, something I've had to learn over time. You could definitely draw one of those meme graphs where beginner and experts both want to use TypeScript minimally, and only the medium user uses all these features. So take that with a grain of salt. Don't go in your code base and find complex solutions to easy problems. But what is important is that you expand your knowledge, because one, that's going to make you a better developer. And two, if you have to solve a hard problem, you have the tools. Um, so lastly, um, I obviously like giving conference talks. That's why I'm here. Um, if y'all want to give me feedback on this talk, that is a form to fill out feedback. So if you didn't like this and you thought I was boring, you can yell at me. If you really liked it, you could do that. You could say something about that too. You probably won't. Usually only negative feedback comes in. Um, and these are the resources that I used. I think they're really useful. And once again, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm happy to solve any TypeScript problem you actually have. So call me. But that's my talk. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you so much to Richard for doing the sound. Everyone's thank Kayla. No one's thank Richard. Clap for Richard.